Can you imagine a world without technology? No computers. No sophisticated transportation. No radio. No telephones or cell phones. No digital cameras. No television. No satellites or exploration of space. One innovation has made all of these things possible. The transistor. The building block of electronics. The predecessor of the transistor was the vacuum tube. Vacuum tubes are used as switches and amplifiers, mainly in bulky radios, inefficient telephone exchanges, and primitive attempts at computers. What transistors do is they amplify signals. Before transistors, we had vacuum tubes, and they do the same sort of thing, but they're much, like, you know, a couple of inches or, you know, high. I mean, it's, it's big, and it, it takes a lot of power to run, and so on. Also, vacuum tubes are less efficient than transistors, and needed to be replaced frequently. In the 1940s, World War II was in its prime, and the telephone infrastructure of AT&T, the main telephone company of the United States, was nearing its capacity. The research division of AT&T, Bell Telephone Labs, was based in Murray Hill, New Jersey. Both the military and officials at Bell Labs wanted to find a substitute for the vacuum tube, but only the latter had the foresight to begin semiconductor research. The semiconductor research group at Bell Telephone Labs was headed by William Shockley. John Bardeen and Walter Battain were at the core of his research group. It was reorganization in Bell Laboratories, and I picked the objective of trying to uh, see if we could make something which would do the same sort of job as a vacuum tube, but to do it with uh, crystal detectors. Shockley, Bardeen, and Brattain began the new project in 1945. By late 1947, Bardeen and Brattain had developed a device that used germanium crystal with gold contacts to produce amplification. Their device, called the Point Contact Transistor, was successfully demonstrated for the first time on December 16, 1947. And on that day, the first transistor was born. The Point Contact Transistor, however, was not successful. It was difficult to manufacture and the contacts could move easily, but it was the first step. To fix the problems with the point contact transistor, William Shockley devised a junction transistor. The junction transistor contained three adjacent layers of germanium with opposite charges. These three layers would be connected to create an electrical circuit. As current flowed through the circuit, the output current from the collector would be greater than the input current going to the emitter. Also, the junction transistor can be used as a switch in addition to as an amplifier. For the next few years, Shockley's group worked on improving the junction transistor. By July 1951, the transistor was finally ready to be shared with the world. The transistor's small size, high efficiency, reliability, and low manufacturing costs contributed to its success and widespread use. The first application of transistors came in 1954, when Texas Instruments began to manufacture transistor radios. These transistor radios were small and portable due to the transistor. Also, in 1954, the Stonotone 1010, the first hearing aid to use transistors instead of vacuum tubes, was released. After that, transistors became more and more popular. In 1956, Bardeen, Brattain, and Shockley won the Nobel Prize for Physics for the invention of the transistor. Later, in 1960, Sony began to manufacture transistors for use in television sets, radios, and other Sony products. The next leap in transistor technology came in 1960 when Jack Kilby invented the integrated circuit, a miniaturized circuit which originally contained tens of thousands of transistors per chip. Today, integrated circuits can contain millions of transistors per chip. I thought it would be important for electronics as we knew it at that time. What I didn't appreciate was how much the field of electronics would expand as the prices got cheaper and, and uh, uh, new applications opened. The real implication of this was the decrease in cost of electronics. Where single transistors had sold for a few dollars uh, after I got into the business, now for a few dollars you can buy 16 million bits of DRAM, which has over 16 million transistors on it. The integrated circuit was a gateway to almost unlimited possibilities for transistors, including computers, cell phones, and sophisticated machinery. The transistor and integrated circuit also played a major role in modern transportation, including cars, trains, and airplanes. 
the transistor has actually changed not only the automobile but our whole lives when you think about it. Uh, in the automobile, we use them for almost every system now. We use them in our anti-lock brake system. We use them in, a, in our climate control systems. We use it in the interior and exterior lighting. Uh, just about every system you can think of. If we were to take the transistor away, we would have cars like we had in the 1950s. The transistor has also made many medical devices possible, including prosthetic limbs, heart monitors, x-rays, MRIs, and pacemakers. Transistor makes pretty much every single daily electronics possible. Even life support electronics such as uh, defibrillators, a, um, things like uh, infusion pumps, electrocardiograph, uh, x-ray, even x-ray is now being supported by electronics for enhanced electronic imaging. None of these uh, instruments would be really quite feasible uh, using vacuum tubes. The transistor and its applications have impacted the world in numerous ways. If the transistor were abolished tomorrow, you would not be recording this. We would have not been on the moon. We would not send things around Jupiter. We wouldn't have computers on my desk downstairs that are more powerful than the one that we spent a million and a half dollars for at the laboratories. Transistors allowed personal electronics. Actually, I should say that the integrated circuit, which is based on the transistor, <coughs> So it just has millions of transistors in it, um, really allowed the personal computer. You know, government agencies and the military and maybe large corporations would have had computers. But you and I would not have been able to afford and operate a computer without transistors. The transistor has made it possible to communicate instantly with anyone, anywhere on the planet. The transistor has increased the speed at which normal people can travel. The transistor has made it possible to travel around the planet in a few days. The transistor has saved millions of lives through new medical devices and new research. The transistor has made it possible to make constant contact with the world around us. With the transistor, we can learn about current events only seconds after they occur. The transistor has made it possible to access all of mankind's knowledge instantly via the internet. The transistor has made the prices of almost all products cheaper using mass production. The transistor has contributed to the growth of mankind's knowledge by allowing man to explore the galaxy, set foot on the moon, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And learn more about the world around him. As the transistor develops, the technologies it has made possible have led to a higher standard of living for people all over the world. Even though the transistor has done all of this for mankind, it has also increased our dependence on electronics and transistors to an alarming and dangerous degree. Without the transistor, our society could not function. Money, records, and information, everything is stored electronically. Electronic data can be easily damaged in a disaster or illegally altered by hackers. At the same time, the transistor continues to shrink and develop at an ever-increasing rate. When this happens, technology becomes obsolete and outdated in a matter of months. Every year, almost 50 million tons of discarded electronic devices end up in landfills all over the world. Most of these devices contain lead, mercury, cadmium, beryllium, or other hazardous chemicals that pollute the planet and harm millions across the world. Despite this, the transistor has affected our lives in almost every way conceivable. In the future, the transistor will continue to shrink down to the size of an atom, inspire countless new innovations, and continue to dominate our technology, culture, and society. Decades from now, we will see sleeker and smarter computers and cell phones, smarter and more efficient cars, many more life-saving medical devices, and then we will thank the transistor for all of it. Beginning 60 years ago, the transistor has led to a previously unseen period of growth and development, knowledge and prosperity for mankind. And because of this, it is a true innovation in history. And even though the transistor has done all of this for mankind, most people have never heard of the transistor, the building block of electronics.